Hello, I'm Catherine Parsons. I'm an artist um, and welcome to my first ever virtual open studio. I'm currently artist in residence with Langdyke Countryside Trust and so I thought I'd, I'd start off by bringing you to one of their nature reserves. Um, it's, it's called Torpel, Torpel Manor Field and it's just to the west of Peterborough between Helpston and Bainton and it's beautiful. This is the first time I've done this type of filming so it all feels a little bit strange and um, yeah there'll probably be quirks and jumps and I hope you'll excuse all that but I so wanted to do something oh there's a hoverfly just coming up to the lens there he goes um, I so wanted to do something to replace open studios and um, my involvement with the Langdyke Open Day they're, they're two things in the year that I so much look forward to and the chance to um, meet people and chat about what I've been doing recently and share the stories that I've been I've been uncovering. So um, this will be very amateur but I hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you'll, you'll comment and let me know what else you want to see um, over the next three weekends of Open Studios. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and my work and um, and we can go for an explore around Torpel and uh, see what we can find. So the materials that I choose to use depend on the story that I want to tell. There's, um, and the techniques, the processes that I use um, are based on that as well. From making photographs on leaves, using sunlight, to wildflower shoes made from sugar. Um, there's lots of stories on my website, so if you want to see more, that you'll find all the information there. My work has been exhibited at the Victoria and Albert Museum. At uh, had a solo exhibition at the National Centre for Craft and Design. Um, I've worked with Derby Museum. Uh, had work at Northampton and Peterborough Museums as well. Um, John Clare Cottage did a big, um, a big project there a few years ago to commemorate the 150th anniversary of his death. And then last year there was a, a huge project um, I was involved with, uh, with Langdyke Countryside Trust and Art Pop-Up to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Langdyke and I'm delighted to say that I stayed on as their artist in residence. I've just swung round so you can see <laughs> the sheep are coming back. So we're going to go for a walk and I'll stop every so often and show you some of the, the things that catch my eye, um, some of the things that make Torpel a, a really special place. I've just stopped because, I don't know if you can see it, there's this lovely little patch of bindweed. I think it's field bindweed here, with the pink flowers. And that's a really important plant. There's a very rare moth that has been found on a couple of Langdyke nature reserves. It's called a four-spotted moth and it only lives in about um, 10 or 12 places in the UK and it needs this plant to survive. The sheep have come to see what I'm doing. Hello little one. Hello. These are Hebridean sheep and they're here to act as conservation grazers. They, they graze away the more vigorous <laughs> they graze away the more vigorous um, plants which enable the wildflowers to grow so we get a, a really good balance of wildflower meadow. Aren't they beautiful? So this little one nearest us is a lamb that was born earlier this year. I don't know if you'll be able to see it but 
this little patch of damp ground here is attracting butterflies. There's a, a white one, I'm not good on identifying white butterflies, and there's also a tortoise shell. The tortoise shell is, oh she's got her wings folded at the minute, I'll try and go in a bit closer. She's just in front of a stone in the middle of the screen. And then there's a white one just behind. Oh, she's opening her wings. Thank you. Isn't that beautiful? I think she's drinking from the damp earth. I really like the gnarly old hawthorns that grow here. They're growing out of a bank of of stone that I guess must have come from the manor house and they're all sorts of wonderful shapes. This one grows downhill before it then goes up. I've just seen there's this stick that's fallen from higher up the hawthorn and it's covered in, in lichen so I've got my magnifying lens out, this is a little botany lens and I'm going to use it to turn the camera into um, a macro lens. If you try this at home, be very, very careful not to scratch your camera, won't you? So by holding the lens up to the camera, I can use this to look really, really closely. Isn't that beautiful? I find lichens and fungi really fascinating. Wow. To the eye, that just looks like a slightly mottled bit of bark. Oh, that's really beautiful. That's lovely. You couldn't possibly see that without a lens. It's a little bit like, um, I always think it's like deep sea, not deep sea diving, um, <laughs> when you go swimming on a coral reef and you see these wonderful shapes and forms that you're not used to seeing in everyday life. And there's that real sense of wonder. I get that every time I look at lichens through a lens. So we, we'll head back to my studio now. Um, and I can show you some of the, the work inspired by Langdyke. Um, but I've just seen, I, I don't know if this will pick up, but on the bank behind me, there are these little fallen wild rose petals. And um, I wasn't going to include this, but I think I, think I will. So I'll, when we get back, I'll also show you some experiments that I've been doing um, that link with this. See you soon. We've come back to the studio because I, I wanted to show you some of the work that I've been making uh, that relates to Langdyke Countryside Trust. Um, this is a piece that I did um, last summer. Um, it's, it's an actual leaf, so you're looking at a real leaf that I collected from one of Langdyke's reserves and then I use sunlight to create the image and um, these are some people on one of the work parties and they're, they're getting a, a raft ready to push out into the water for terns to nest on. Um, the, the process of getting the image on, on the leaf is just done using sunlight. I didn't paint it, there aren't any chemicals painted on the, um, the leaf at all and it's a very fragile thing the the colors are going to shift and change over time if it was left out in sunlight then it would start to slowly fade so um, because of that although i have still got the leaves um, i keep them in the dark <laughs> um, but i've worked with an amazing fine art printmaker called stephen meadwell who's locally based and um, he's actually done some prints for me so that um, they can enjoy, be enjoyed the whole year round. I'll just get one out and show you. Oh, before I do that, um, this little bit of tape 
um, I was inspired by herbariums, um, the collections of plants that are pressed to study at a later stage. Um, and I did a course about how um, herbarium specimens are, are preserved and, and looked after. And so this page is set up as a herbarium page would be with the leaf held on by linen, special linen tape. And then you've got the, the information at the bottom about where it was collected and when. I'll just put this away and get out the print to show you. There you go, there's the print. Behind glass, so you've got some reflections now, I'm afraid. But um, yeah, I oh, was so, so pleased when I saw it. It looks three dimensional, it's incredible. Uh, absolutely delighted. And that's got the little label at the bottom as well. If I just carefully turn it around. See. Oops. There you go. And reflections of my camera as well. <laughs> it's balanced on a sort of tripod thing that I've created so that it's holding steady while I show you this work. So that's one of the leaves from the Langdike Herbarium of Stories. And I just wanted to show you something else as well. If you hear something that sounds like footsteps, it's pigeons running up and down on the studio roof. Um, I just thought I'd show you this. Um, it's something I've been experimenting with, um, just finding out what it does. It's, um, it's a technique called haposomy. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, you lay down the plant material on a piece of paper or fabric, fold it over, and um, tap it with a stone or small hammer until you can see the juices being released, the colour coming through. So this one was made with a geranium from my garden and a piece of a fennel leaf. You can perhaps just see a very faint green there. Um, and it's something that I've been experimenting with during lockdown because I'm, well, I've got the existing um, interest in colours that come from plants, so plant dyes, eco-printing, and, and this is a more immediate way of releasing the colour onto the, the paper or the fabric. Um, and when we went into lockdown, I, I got very interested in the colours that are very accessible immediately in my home, so um, rather than thinking about going and buying paints or ordering paints. I just wanted to find out the colours that are in my back garden and in my house. So the dark here is a thick coffee, um, instant coffee made really, really thick and used as a painting ink and then painted on with a stick. That I can't see at the minute, here we go. A little stick that I found in the garden. So it's, it's very local. It always feels to me that the, the plants that you find in a place are part of the story of the place and so it's my way of telling stories about them about locations and the botany and then because Langdike um, I mentioned when we were at Torpel that Langdike has this very special moth that has started making its home on one of the on a couple of the reserves oh there's the pigeon <laughs> um, I've started making these little moths so these are just experiments I don't know where they're going um, but I'm getting more and more insect interested in the insects that are around home and the nature reserves. I find that I'm noticing more than I ever did before. And there's a lot of interest within Langdike at the moment as well. If you follow on the Facebook page, you'll see there's um, lots of people sharing information and um, identifying insects. There, there's a brilliant one that... Um, I learnt this week it's called a swollen thighed beetle. Um, if you saw my picture, uh, it was the end of last week, of this incredible little gem of a beetle um, on a white flower, that's, that's what that is. So I'm loving learning and I'm loving finding out what different plants will do, the colours that are released and turning them into my own um, quirky little insects. This vibrant little one is... Um, marked with coffee again. Oh and this, I love this. 
So the blue here was from a purple geranium petal. And then this part here, can you see that? This part here um, is from a white rose petal. And so on one side of the rose, you can actually, if you look closely, you can see the veins. Um, I don't know if that will show up on the camera. And this side, I've got no colour at all in the central part of, of the wing, but there's just the faintest, faintest edge. I think that's really beautiful. So I'm thoroughly enjoying finding out more about the colours that come from plants and the plants that are growing, very, very local to me. And um, this is something I'm going to be doing more of because I want to discover, I want to discover what else we could do. So thank you very much for coming um, to my first virtual open studio um, and on the trip to Torpel. I hope very much that you've enjoyed it. Um, it's been lovely showing you round and I'll be putting up some pictures of um, artworks with some more details. Um, some will be available to purchase through the um, as part of the artist support pledge which is a, a beautiful, generous um, idea started by a British artist, Matthew Burroughs. Um, there'll be more about that, um, more details of that in the, the Facebook feed. Um, and so there'll be, yes, so there'll be more, more photos of work coming up on Facebook over the next few days. And next week I will give you a tour of my studio as it looks during normal working life rather than um, tidied away and cleaned up for open studios when I have to put some of my my day-to-day -day stuff away so to have room to display work. So um, I hope you'll be able to join me next Saturday as well and um, I look forward to seeing you when we can all meet again. Goodbye.